How do you start a YouTube channel with zero subscribers and still grow? When I started doing this, there wasn't a lot of advice out there, so I'm gonna tell you some things that I wish someone had told me when I was just getting started and figuring all of this out on my own. And I'm gonna give you 12 specific pieces of advice, some of it you haven't actually heard before, and it's gonna be something that I think will help a lot of you who are small YouTubers, who are feeling discouraged, or you're struggling, or you're lost, you don't know where to begin. I'm gonna lay it out for you. Um, not all of it is what you want to hear, but a lot of it is what you need to hear. So here are 12 tips for growing your YouTube channel from zero. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome back to the channel. For the new people here, first of all, welcome. Uh, I know you clicked on this video for YouTube tips, but I do a little bit more than that. My name is Roberto Blake. I'm a creative entrepreneur and public speaker at events like VidCon, Social Media Marketing World. I built a social media coaching business. Uh, today, I really want to focus on YouTube because it's one of the platforms you can use to market yourself, build your income, start making money from home. And that's a lot of what I talk about on this channel because I think creative people get thrown out of the bus. I think that like uh, creative people have life beaten out of them from the time they're kids. And I don't like that. So what I try to do with this channel is encourage people and give them tools to actually follow their passion and make it profitable. So if you're into that, you might want to hit subscribe. I think one of the most important things I can give you for tip number one is to be patient because there aren't shortcuts. And a lot of you, you're beating yourself up about not feeling like you're good enough at this when you just have to be patient. You weren't good at a lot of things when you first got started. You weren't born knowing how to drive. You weren't born knowing how to write your own name. These things take time. And if you abuse yourself because you're comparing yourself to big people that you look up to, it's just gonna get harder every time to hit the record button and just get started. So the first thing I wanna tell you is to just be patient and that most people aren't good at anything when they start. If you look at people's old videos, they kinda suck. Mine are the worst. There is no way that whatever you're going to do for your first couple of videos is as bad as my first couple of videos. So yeah, that's just the first thing to get out of the way. My second tip is to have some kind of plan and general outline. In fact, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give a snapshot of my whiteboard here because I'm starting a new channel uh, this year myself from scratch. One, I wanted the experience and then two, I had so many great ideas that don't fit this channel. So I had to make another channel and to do that from scratch, I had to make a plan for that channel. So I made a whiteboard and I actually planned out what I wanted to do. Now, you don't have to get crazy with this, but I just feel like if you have a plan uh, for success, things go easier because you're not in your own head all the time if you just write things down. So I write things down, I make sticky notes, I use my whiteboard, uh, you can use a notebook. I really recommend you do that. I like the idea of writing your ideas because we get caught in this digital thing so much that we forget that just writing something down helps us you know, stay sharp, stay fresh, and remember things. Tip number three, just make videos. When you're getting started, uh, I know that I put some pressure on people sometimes to like find a niche, find one thing and stick to it. And that is how you grow. But when you're just getting started, you shouldn't be thinking about growth anyway. You should just get used to being on camera because being on camera, looking the lens in the eye like it's a person and talking to an inanimate object and trying to reach a imaginary audience that may or may not be there, it's freaking hard. It is one of the hardest things to do and you look like a crazy person. So uh, that's why most YouTubers start in their bedroom and even stay in their bedroom because it's the only place we feel safe to do this really crazy thing that is a little bit awkward, very embarrassing. And again, I couldn't talk this naturally or fluidly for my first 100 videos. Okay, and I've done over a thousand videos now, so it takes time, and it doesn't matter who you are. Like, I mean, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, he wasn't good at it when he first got started either. Watch his oldest videos on Wine Library TV, and he'll tell you himself, it took him like, you know, 50 to 60 episodes to get his rhythm. So just start making videos, um, and it doesn't matter what they're about when you start, but if you're going to make videos just to get started, you cannot think about growing. You can't because you just have to make something without worrying about it because it's just so hard to hit record and to put something out there. You cannot worry about being judged and you cannot worry about getting numbers. This is practice. So treat it like practice and make it for you. And the easiest way to do that is to just make a video 
talking about something you care about. You don't have to vlog your life. It doesn't have to be cinematic. It doesn't even have to be the video that you want to really try to make. You just need to make a video so you can get comfortable in the habit of making a video. Tip number four. Uh, you don't need fancy camera gear. This camera got me to about 120,000 subscribers and it doesn't even have a flip out screen. This is like an old Nikon D3200. Um, it's nothing special, but it's what I had from my freelance photography and you know what I was using to make money at the time. So I think that if you just start with what you have, it's good enough. Um, today, a smartphone is actually better than this camera to be very real with you. Um, and you don't need anything fancy. I also had um, this, you know, Canon, um, you know, Vixia. This is just a camcorder and it does have a flip out screen. And I rarely used it, honestly, because I was just more used to the Nikon. So what I would tell you is that you, you don't have to have fancy gear to get started and to make a successful channel. You just need stuff that's good enough. I'm going to link to some things that I think are affordable in the description. I would say you could just get a webcam. These are $90 and they're more than good enough. Um, there are some very affordable microphones. I, a $30 mic in some cases can be just as good as a $300 mic. I'm going to do a video about that on my other channel because I think people don't realize that. So I'm doing some microphone tests and things over there. Um, I just feel like you have to work with what you can afford. Even with software, DaVinci Resolve is almost just as good on a free version as Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro. And that pains me to say because I'm an Adobe Premiere guy. I'm an Adobe guy for life. Um, you know, I'm not a shill, but I probably have a bias because I grew up with Adobe. I've been using Adobe products for like 15, 20 years of my life. Um, you know, I'm about to be 35. Like, so for me, everything's about Adobe. But if I had zero money in the bank, I'd be all over DaVinci Resolve if I was starting out doing video or being a YouTuber. Um, in terms of you know, thumbnail stuff, I'll get into that later in the video, but there's even free stuff you can use that's really good at making thumbnails. So I don't think that having no money keeps you from being a YouTuber. I just think you have to accept where you are right now and do the best you can with what you have. Number five, if you have a niche and a focus for your channel, you will grow faster. And the reason is that every video is the exact thing that whoever found you signed up and subscribed for. If I wanted this channel to be a 1 million subscribe channel, I would literally focus on my top performing videos that I know people subscribed for. And guess what? It wasn't the how to grow YouTube channel videos. The videos that do the best on this channel by far focus on passive income, affiliate marketing, and growing an online business because not everyone wants to be a YouTuber and have an audience, but everybody needs money and everyone wants financial freedom. And if I focused my channel on things like freelancing and uh, making money online, affiliate marketing, that kind of stuff, I know that it would blow up and that it would get bigger. But I also understand that marketing yourself is a really important part of that and actually having real skills is an important part of that. And so, yeah, I do all of those things here on the channel because it's who I actually am. And it has worked and it does grow my channel, but it also means that I don't get the same views as channels that focus on just very specific, focused content. They just do like one or two very specific things. And that means that whenever they upload, everybody who subscribed to them is getting exactly what they want and they can keep growing and they will get views that kind of match those subscriber numbers a little bit more. If you diversify, you might grow, you might have a broad audience, but you will not get the views on every upload that you're looking for to feel satisfied. Because I know that's what so many of you care about. I don't, and I don't believe in it, but you guys care about views, that's what's gonna do it. Focus and niche down. If you don't, do not cry about not growing because that's just the way it is. But like I said, at the start, don't worry about it. Just make stuff that you like. Number six. Number six is hard because a lot of you watching this, you're in school or you work a job, you have a family. Um, this one's hard because it's the real barrier between who is and who isn't successful on YouTube at the end of the day. It's the biggest barrier. You have to put a crazy amount of time into this if you want to get results. 
the channels that are most successful on YouTube are the ones that are committed to YouTube, the people who are able to make YouTube a priority and to put YouTube first. Those are the people who made it. If you look at the success story of any creator that you really look up to, they'll tell you that they let this take over their life for a certain amount of time. And to be very honest, the fact that I haven't put more time up front into this channel uh, has had some ramifications in terms of how quickly it can grow. Because you have to remember, I did over 1,200 videos plus in the last five years or so. That's a lot. There was a point where I did daily content. Because of my background, I didn't have to spend eight hours on every single video. But there are people, and also the type of content that I decided to do, but there are people that the type of content they do that works and is emotionally satisfying for them, it takes five, six, or even 20 hours to make a video. They dedicate everything to this, and you cannot be surprised that they grow. If you can't make that commitment, you have to accept that you will grow slower, and that's okay. My advice to you is if you're a student or you work a job or have a family that takes away from this is to start a foundation for your channel with easy, simple to make content and to do as much of that as you can and to just do your best until you have more time to put into this and until it's proven that it's worth it for you. And that's my honest advice. Um, it's not something I think a lot of people want to hear, but it is the truth. Number seven, learn to market yourself. Uh, too many of you getting started, you rely too much on the YouTube algorithm. You need to learn about how to get traffic. It doesn't just come from nowhere. So you need to use tools to optimize your channel and take advantage of um, SEO. Uh, I'm going to recommend TubeBuddy. I also have a 20% off code for you guys in the description. It's Roberto's Buddy. You just use the link, TubeBuddy.com slash awesome. They'll take care of you. Uh, they got excellent customer service, uh, hashtag not sponsored, just an affiliate. But what I will tell you is that if it wasn't for my background in SEO and marketing, um, I think it would have been a lot more challenging and a lot slower to grow on YouTube. So I had skills from my career that gave me an advantage. Uh, knowing Photoshop gave me an advantage. Um, my experience editing with Premiere Pro commercially gave me an advantage. So um, I came to the table with a lot that new YouTubers don't because I worked a, a corporate job and career that kind of set me up for that success in a way. Um, and that's something that not everyone has. And I get that. That's why I do tutorials and I do these videos because you can learn those things. You don't have to learn them on the job, although that's a great way to do it. You don't have to go to school for it. That could be really expensive. There are a lot of things like Skillshare and there's free stuff here on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Learn to market yourself. Look for websites and forums and Discord servers and communities where you can get feedback because I think it's important. Also, don't underestimate Twitter. It's a big deal. And for those of you, if you're doing motivation content or education or career-based content, uh, LinkedIn is a big deal. Um, for those of you who are entertainers, while you're doing a YouTube channel, consider doing Instagram and TikTok um, so either one of those at the same time so you have another way to get your name out there because a lot of you you're just focused on your YouTube channel um, you have to put a lot into your YouTube channel but you also need other places to get that traffic from if you care about growing YouTube if you can find a way to promote yourself in Reddit without being spammy or without getting banned um, that's a good place to get traffic to number eight learn about the YouTube platform learn how YouTube actually works I've done like 200 videos explaining a lot of the different aspects of YouTube, not just how to grow, but how to actually use some of the tools and features and things you need to know. So you definitely want to subscribe and watch those videos. But this is something that I think is taken for granted. YouTube gives you a lot of resources and there are a lot of tools in YouTube's own system that most creators never take advantage of. They never do everything they can for their channel. They still don't do things like a YouTube channel trailer to promote it and to let people know what it's about. A lot of people don't customize their homepage. They don't fill out their about page. They don't fill out their descriptions and tags. You don't learn about the YouTube system. You're just posting videos and hoping something happens. And that that's not how it works. Um, I don't think a lot of you need to like take a like $1,000 YouTube course 
But what I do think is you need education. And if you're not learning it on YouTube from people like me or uh, Sonny Lair Doozy or Daryl Eves, Tim Schmoyer, uh, Sean Canal over at Think Media, whoever, Nick Nimmin, Brian G. Johnson, like I can name like a dozen homies that you should be watching. But if you're not going to do that, or that's not how you learn, I'm going to tell you that you should consider instead of getting a course, and there's nothing wrong with courses, but I'm going to tell you, you should consider going to an event or even hosting a local YouTube meetup of some kind, a library or, or a park or something, so that you can talk to other creators and learn from their experience, people at your level, people bigger than you, people smaller than you. Um, I think that understanding what YouTube is, is important, and there are a lot of ways to do it. So I don't think that it's always going to be you need coaching or a course. I do think those things help. That's why I offer those things. But some people, I think, learn better by interacting with a community. And I think if you go to an event like Vid Summit or even VidCon, I think that that could be helpful. And if that's too expensive, I think going to a local meetup or hosting one is a good opportunity to learn from other people, get feedback and share experiences. I also think that there are Facebook groups and Discord communities you could be a part of. So that's something I would think about. Number nine, when nobody knows who you are, you need a way to make them care. And you're not going to do that by, oh, what did I eat today? It's like, I, I get it. I get it. And I'm making a very specific joke. But the thing is, when I had zero subscribers on YouTube, no one cared who Roberto Blake was. What they cared about was the search-friendly content that gave them something they were looking for. Now, not all of you are going to be doing education content. I get that. So even if you're doing entertainment, you need to tap into, if it's not search-friendly content, you need to tap into a trend. But I will tell you flat out that while that can get you attention and get you an initial audience, it's going to be hit or miss. And you, when you decide to do something that is about you and you want people to care about you, the majority of people who came there because you were doing trending topics aren't going to translate to being core followers who care about your personality. And that sounds harsh, but I'm trying to be honest with you because everyone will tell you, you know, very, and it's very sincere to just, you know, do what you want and, you know, be your personality and people will subscribe for that. And here's the thing. I can't follow everybody's life. I don't like everybody's personality and neither does anybody else. So the reality is that if you build your your thing around this attention grabbing thing, then people are coming for that. They're not coming for you. I think that if you don't have a niche or you can't do search engine content um, and you're not interested in like writing trends and also worrying every minute about whether you miss a trend, then I think something you could look at doing is build a show and a community based channel for people that are like you around whatever it is that makes you interesting or unique or special or weird. So I think like, you know, building um, a show around your particular type of weirdo, it means that if you build a show and you're doing that show, everybody who subscribes said yes to that show, which means no matter what the episodes are about, they're getting what they signed up for. You get what I'm saying? So um, I might do a video about that specifically because it's a content strategy hack. I just have to figure out a clickbaity title for it. Number 10, if you're a small YouTuber, focus on your community and focus on your content. Don't worry about growing if you're not replying to every single comment and you have less than 100,000 subscribers. Reply to every comment. When you get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm sure it'll get unmanageable. That's what happened to me, right? But in the meantime, when you're trying to grow, when you're trying to grow, you have to be engaged. And when you're trying to grow, you have to worry about the content and not worry about the numbers. You have to worry about how you can get better at uh, your video camera settings. You have to worry about getting better at the editing. You have to get better at your on-camera presence and delivery. You have to get better at lighting. You have to get better at being comfortable in talking in public. You have to focus on your actual skills and your abilities as a content creator, as a performer, as a host, and everything else comes afterward. The, the numbers, the money, everything else comes after your content and your community and your commitment to people. That has to be first and foremost, or you're not going to be successful. So if you're a small YouTuber, 
if you're watching this, I implore you, make it about just doing better every time you upload. Don't beat yourself up. Don't get perfection in your head. Perfection is poison. But what you have to do is just try to be better every time. It's just small tweaks. Small tweaks go a long way, I promise. Number 11. This is the secret probably to a lot of my success, but also PewDiePie brought this up uh, that he's brought this up multiple times. Everyone forgets that when Felix was first getting started, he was going to be a graphic designer and YouTube was a hobby, um, but he didn't get the internship he wanted. He was going to work for like a really good ad agency in, in the UK and it just didn't work out, but he had the Photoshop skills. And when you make good thumbnails, when you make really good thumbnails that get people's attention, even if you don't have subscribers, because by the way, YouTube does not give your videos to your subscribers as evidenced by this channel um, and everybody else complaining about it on YouTube. It's a very real thing. Um, it's kind of broken. But thumbnails, thumbnails help you reach people who have no idea who you are. That's interesting. That looks good. I want to click on it. That's how thumbnails work. So I would put more effort into your thumbnails than whatever you're putting into them now. I would put five or 10 times more effort into that. Uh, there's free software out there. GIMP is clunky, but if you don't want to pay the $10 a month for Photoshop, it's there. Just pay the $10 a month for Photoshop. Um, there are other tools if you want. Uh, Affinity is like 50 or $60, and that's good. Um, it doesn't get enough credit. I'm still a Photoshop guy, but it's a good option if you're on a budget. Um, we just know that I have extravagant taste in software and hardware. It's just how I am. Um, you know, don't be like that. Like, be frugal. Don't throw money away to just... Anyway, my point is, focus more on your thumbnails and on designing them well. It could come down to photography. If you're not a good designer, then you have to be really good at photography, do expressive faces, you know, things like that, do the YouTuber things. You know, like, I mean, it works and it gets people's attention. Um, you don't have to be a great designer. Um, David Dobrik is really good at making um, clickable thumbnails. Uh, you could call it clickbait if you want. He's the king of clickbait. But the good thing about it is it's not bad clickbait. The scene that he's framing exists in the video that he's showing you. And you're waiting for that scene and he's building up to it. So it's actually really smart. Um, Mr. Beast makes the thumbnail sometimes before the actual video. Um, so I, Or he at least thinks about it or plans it. So I think that those are really good strategies because clicks get you views. Views get you watch time, that grows your channel, that gives you everything else. You need to click first. For those of you who aren't great at YouTube thumbnails, um, I have a resource that I built called the YouTube Starter Kit. It helps with thumbnails and channel artwork so your channel can look really good even from the beginning. So um, that's linked down below if that's something you care about because um, it's got like over 160 downloads, Photoshop files, and you can open them up with the open source software. Um, there's even something called photo P that you can use and that's totally free. So, you know, it's just an option for you. Finally, tip number 12, just keep uploading. Most people on YouTube aren't successful because they stop uploading, they quit, they get discouraged. Don't do that and you will be successful. You can do this if you're willing to do what it takes and put in the work. So I want you to not just decide that you're going to give up if this is something you really want. If you really want to do YouTube, it's still possible to be successful, even if you're starting from scratch. Um, and so I want you to understand that it does take hard work, but it also takes patience and a commitment to learning new things and challenging yourself. Uh, speaking of challenging yourself, question of the day. Uh, what is the most challenging thing for you as a content creator? And the answer cannot be getting views and it cannot be getting subscribers. I want to know was the most challenging thing for you in the process of actually making content. So leave that in the comment section. What is it that you are struggling with when it comes to making content? And it cannot be views and it cannot be subscribers. It has to be something that is an actual barrier to you making things. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff here on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching. And don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.